In today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing season one of Outlander. Hello guys, how's it going? I hope you're all well. Welcome to my vlog. My name is Sean and I am a YouTube vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. Welcome. Thank you very much guys for joining in once again to another episode talking about and discussing and sharing everything to do with Scotland. This is part of my Scottish Stories series. I am watching Outlander, a series all about Scotland, the history of the Scottish clans, and a woman who goes from the 1900s back to 100 years to the time of the Scottish clans. Now I want to start today's episode by saying thank you very much for all you guys who have been joining in on these vlogs. It really means a lot to me. If you are new to this vlog, I very much appreciate you being here and I would be very, very grateful if you would hit the big red subscribe button down below so you can keep in touch with all my videos and join the family. Follow me on social media. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the rest of it. Let's talk Scotland. Let's talk about Scottish culture, accents, Outlander. Outlander is incredible. I have been enjoying it immensely. Right, Outlander season one. I was recommended to watch it by you guys on YouTube and I have now completed season one. I was in Scotland on my honeymoon in 1945. It took me a little while to get into it in the beginning, but once I got into it, wow, Diana Gabaldon, the writer of the books, she has created some story. And there's been a lot of people in the comments down below saying to me to read the books because they're excellent. I will, I promise, I will get there eventually. I just wanna get the TV series out of the way first. You guys are already waiting for the third season. I'm not a big massive TV series fan, to be honest, but I do love Outlander. Diana Gabaldon, the writer, has got me big time guys, like hook, line and sinker. When I found out about the series all about Scotland, I just had to go there and check it out. Just in terms of Scottish culture, it is highly, highly fascinating. It immediately just throws up all these ideas like what was Scotland like back then? It's just something that very few people could have absolute insight into. Outlander gives you that kind of imagination, the possibility of the ideas of what things could have been like. Although historians and stuff might argue that a lot of the stuff might not be factually correct, there is a lot of truth to some of it. As a lot of you know, it took its time actually getting onto Scottish televisions. I think you guys in mostly North America had it first. It's watched all around the world, obviously, Australia, mainland Europe, South America, Canada. A lot of people have been watching Outlander, but in Scotland, it has been slow. There's not as big a following in Scotland yet, but it is coming, be assured, since one of the main TV networks has recently picked it up. And that is why I've only just got around to finishing season one. Emotionally, it has been exhausting. It has been terrific. Like, what a ride. So in the review of the first season, I want to talk about four main themes that were quite relevant for me. The first theme is Scottish clans. Now, as I have explained to you guys, and a lot of people do not believe me when I say this, but Scottish clans, the system of clans, the history of the clans, what they were all about, what they meant to Scotland, has largely been ignored in Scottish classrooms. I knew very, very little basic facts about the Scottish clans. And I dare say that would have continued throughout my adult life. It doesn't matter if it wasn't all historically accurate, but what it has done is it has sparked an interest in Scottish clan culture, history, and what it meant for the makeup of the country and the political future of the country. So like, that is so, so important. If that does that to myself, a Scottish person, who now wants to go and research on my own right on the Scottish clans, that's amazing because that will be replicated throughout a lot of other Scottish people. Albeit that it has actually taken a TV show and novels written by an American to actually spark that interest, I find that quite interesting. But as I've learned, there's people from all around the world who have got Scottish ancestry. There's a lot of people in America, Canada, Argentina, other parts of South America, Australia, people from Europe, all with Scottish ancestry. And that's fascinating to me. I want to connect with you guys and know more about you and your Scottish culture and history. And it's all been thanks to Outlander. Outlander has opened a whole new world for me. And I genuinely mean that when I say that. That is quite a big statement, but this is genuinely true. Outlander has changed my perspective and my knowledge of Scotland. A lot of the things I've seen in Outlander, I've done my own research into the facts. It has made me curious. So I will be eternally grateful for that fact. Any knowledge I gain on Scottish clan history and culture will have been thanks to that spark of interest from Outlander the series. And you know, a number of the things shown in Outlander have been actually quite true. The way the clans are made up, the chiefs, how they interact with each other, they had fights between them, they had different political loyalties. Some of the clans obviously supported the Stuart 
crown and others backed the British monarch. So that was really interesting as well, you know, the fights the clans had between themselves and also their cultures, you know, I think it's fascinating when we saw for example, in the episode where they all came together for a big gathering and a party, like that would have been such an important part of clan life when they came together, had their parties, had their big meals and celebrated because like that's when people would have got together, met future partners and got married. And in fact, I dare say those types of events would have been the main social events. So that was the first thing, the clans, a kind of glimpse of what clan life may have been like. The second thing I want to talk about in my review of the first season is the relationships. That is one of the main things that gets the story. It just in everybody's hearts. There's a lot of relationships throughout this series, throughout the story. Like the relationships between the people in the clans, the relationships between the main characters. Claire. Claire is the main character of Outlander. She obviously has relationships in the present time, not the present time, in the 1900s with her husband Frank, which is a crazy and interesting dynamic with the relationships she has when she goes back in time through the stones to the time of the Scottish clans. And obviously in the first episode, we immediately know that her husband Frank's ancestor, Captain Jack Randall, is in the series. And obviously the difference between those two characters, Frank and Captain Jack Randall, same bloodline, but two very different people. One of the things I was thinking throughout was how will she now think of her husband Frank, given that he is of the same bloodline? That is an interesting complex, like would the bad genes of one person the bad character, would that transfer down the lines? And obviously the big relationship of Outlander is between Claire and Jamie, the two heroes of the show. We love them both from the start. I think everybody does, but I think he loved them even more as a couple and also made us kind of cheer for their success. And of course, Jamie's relationship with his clan members, his family, who do not always like or trust Claire. But that's what the storyline is about. You know, basically Claire and Jamie and how they will survive the future together. And that is something that we are obviously left wondering at the end, which will continue into series in the future. And obviously, Sam Hewen playing Jamie, he is just such a heartthrob around the world. I don't know, maybe it could be the ginger, rugged Scotsman type of look that quite a few of us of the Scottish gene possess. It might also have something to do with our charming, soft Scottish accent. You tell me. What is it that you love about Jamie so much? Now, talking about characters, I think I should mention my favourites from season one. Now, obviously, Claire and Jamie are brilliant characters and we all love them. So I think it wouldn't be right to include them in my favourite characters list. First of all would be Colm, the chief of Clan Mackenzie, the laird of Leoch Castle. The thing I love about Colm is he's just so authoritative. When he speaks, everybody listens. What about the other money you collected? The money for the bonny Stuart Prince across the water. Yes, we know his physical state is not good. Let's face it, he could not win a fight with anyone in the way he is conditioned. But yet, everybody has such respect for Colm. He comes across as so knowledgeable. He is the elder of the clan and everybody looks up to him for guidance. And you can just see that his character is so powerful. When he gives orders, everybody listens. Like, it's just such a powerful, powerful figure in the series, I really, really like Colm and it'll be interesting to see his dynamic going forward after season one. Second character who I have come to really enjoy watching is Angus. Uh, Mr. Clear. May I kiss you farewell? You may kiss me au revoir. Why Angus? Angus is the short, hairy Scotsman. Actually, the actor isn't even Scottish, but he does a very, very good job imitating a short, hairy Scotsman. It's the humour. He is a cheeky wee chappy. He makes people laugh, and he's just the type of person that most people want to have around as an ally. I'm so sorry. Seriously? Apologies, Mr. Aside. I lost my head. Third character I really like, and this is going to surprise you, Black Jack Randall. Why? He's just, there's something about him that I can't figure out. He's just dark, mysterious, evil, the villain of the show. I mean, the first season of Outlander, and I dare say the whole series would not be what it is without Black Jack Randall. He is the bad guy of the show, and bloody hell, he is bad. Really, really bad. Think about a bad, bad person, an evil person, and then you have to go even beyond that to get anywhere close. But listen, that brings me on to the next theme. I want to talk about rape, a big part of season one of Outlander. And I think the thing is, we see a couple of rapes throughout the series, but the rape in particular of Jamie by Blackjack Randall in Wentworth Prison 
was something I was not expecting. Very, very difficult to watch. But I think one of the reasons this series is so good is the way they have managed to emotionally challenge the audience. It will not be for everybody, that scene in particular. And it just goes to show you how deep, dark and depraved some people can be. Because guys, this is a fiction series, right? I think the good thing as well, that, that scene and other scenes with Jack Randall, it reminds you of just how bad empires were. The British Empire, the British government army. Because things like that happened and they happened at scale. So in order for things like that to come back in our memory, for us to understand the historical context of the wars that happened in Scotland and elsewhere in the world, we need to see violence. War is an ugly, ugly business. We need to be challenged. And like, the thing is, that scene of the rape and the last episode, it's not all given to us in one blast. It's like something that is just pulled out slowly and slowly and slowly. So it's like we are shocked multiple times about what happened to Jamie. For me, it's when Black Jack Randall put Jamie's hand on the table and battered him with a mallet and also put a nail into his hand. Like, I felt that. Like, I was just, I was cringing and I was hurting. That is the sign the mark of just how brilliant this series is. And I am assured the novels, those details are just as real. So Outlander has been brilliant for that. Like, let us not forget what this was about. And it was about war. Some ugly things happen in war. And if you're not brought to that reality, if you're not opened to that reality, then it cannot ever be anywhere close to being real. We always knew it was going to happen sooner or later. That is the funny thing. We just didn't know who exactly it would happen to and how. That brings me nicely onto my final theme for reviewing season one, which is escape. Escape is played throughout season one, whether it is clear when she's captured in the beginning by the clan Mackenzie and how she might escape. She tries several times and fails whether it is Claire's escape from the wrong century and back into the 1900s. Jamie actually provides her with that opportunity to make that escape and she obviously chooses not to do it. But like, that has us gripped, that story of escape. And then the other escape theme that plays throughout Outlander season one is Jamie, Claire and other clan members with the British Red Coat Army. Because we know they're gonna be captured several times throughout the season which they are. We also saw the gory details of how Jamie was flogged by Black Jack Randall and then his story of escape from that and how that plays into the theme of the story. Fort William Castle, Claire captured by the British Redcoats and subsequently beaten by Black Jack Randall. She manages to escape like throughout episodes. We are just gripped about how that could possibly happen. And then when it does, it's daring, it's bold and it's brilliant. Jamie is obviously captured by the British Army and he is condemned to death like, people next to him were hung, and we're thinking, this is it. Jamie is going to die right here and right now. And yet he doesn't. He escapes. And right until the last moments of season one, we're thinking, are they going to escape this situation? Are they going to get out of the country? Because that's basically what needs to happen. And we're left with a broken Jamie and Claire on a boat, where they're leaving Scotland, leaving troubles behind, and going to France. And we're thinking, yes, finally, they've escaped. Wow. What a whirlwind, what a journey we have been on so far. Season one has just been absolutely incredible and as a Scottish person, I just feel privileged that this show happened because it has opened my eyes, it has made me curious. That's it, my review of season one. I am from Scotland and it's cool to get a different perspective on a series that so many people love and enjoy around the world. And I've got a promise to make to you guys as well. I am not in Scotland at the moment, despite my stag deer sticker I've got on my wall, something that makes me feel of home slightly. But I'm going back to Scotland very soon, in the next couple of weeks actually, and I will be doing some really interesting, cool Outlander content as soon as I get home. I have it lined up already and I think you guys are going to be thrilled. Thanks so much for joining in and leaving your comments and liking these videos and sharing them with your friends and family, that is very, very important to me. And subscribing, of course. As I say, let's keep it up, let's keep up that dialogue, let's get speaking about it. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a great day, night, morning, or whatever time of the day it is where you are in the world. Take care.